All right. We'll move this little bit. All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome in. Sorry for the delay. I was uh, trying to eat a little bit before we started this. Um, today we're going to add a, a little house to January's embroidery journal and then um, we'll finish off the rest of the lines and the months and then the year with the black that we had started on. So pretty much picking up where we left off from last Sunday, uh, where before I had just done these three lines, or I guess six, depending on how you count them. And then we did January and then the little twitch. Um, last Thursday, I started the Witcher and did this before the stream. Do that. I have a I have a weird little light action going on with uh, the window. Um, I'll try and avoid that. <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to be doing a few digital art pieces of some homes. And that's why we're going to do this little house. It's going to be um, the ones I'm doing are uh, digital art. I'm going to be doing are all winter themed. Just It's winter. So um, that'd be cute to do just a little simple house. Uh, the colors I chose for the house are rather muted uh, since it's winter. I thought that that would be a good, uh, instead of having bright spring colors, I want to do um, houses in each season. So we'll have fun colors for each of those as that comes up. But the colors I chose are rather muted, like I had said. I figured the house color could be this like light gray blue, um, 807, maybe, there we go, 807, the uh, gray blue, which is 903, and then this rose for the brick. Oh, I'm sorry, this will be like for the window outline and then the door. And then this will be for like a little um, chimney. And that is 3722. I also have a little bit of this yellow that I have extra from a previous project. Um, and it's a very small amount of yarn. I'm just figured it would be a good little adder to put into the window to show like that the light is on. <clears throat> uh, what I'll also be adding, you can see these two little dots here. Uh, when we first began, I, I'm for The Witcher 3, I um, pl am playing on Death March and will be counting how many deaths throughout the game. And we got two. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they were both fall deaths. Um, the first one definitely was. is rather embarrassing. <laughs> um, and uh, But hey, it happens. Um, so I'm going to be adding two little uh, dots right there just to represent them. And then throughout playthroughs, I was just going to keep adding little dots and then however long we're playing the Witcher for. There'll be like little dots throughout. Um, so, yep, that's that. We can go ahead and get started. Oh, and then this is the same black that we had from before. I just put it on this guy to make it easier to unravel. We'll finish that, but let's go ahead and do those little dots first since that'll be really easy to do. Won't even need a lot of string or thread. I don't know why I always say string. Same thing. Um, so, like I was saying with the houses, for the, um, I'll be posting a little digital art sketch. Um, I didn't have time to color it, so that'll eventually happen where I do a full color image of this little winter house. Um, oh, 
Thank you. I'm getting more lights. It is, uh, I do have a lot of shadow action going on. <laughs> Oh, better? Yeah, very nice. Thank you. All right, I'm going to do some knots. There we go. Nice short thread. We're just going to be doing two little, I um, can't remember what they're exactly called, a French knot maybe? Oh, I already took out my needle. See if I need the uh, needle threader or, or not. We shall see. Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> What I was saying before is that for each of these houses, for each season, so the winter months, I'm doing little, a few little houses in winter uh, scene. Um, and then the spring, I want to do the same set, but in, you know, full of flowers, um, maybe some rain, you know, the iconic spring. Uh, look and then summer do um, a summer scene same houses and then the same with the winter so well it was a, something to look forward to uh, in this year but uh, so what we're going to be doing um, I don't know if it's a, a French knot or what the actual term is I probably should have looked that up sorry um, but you just come up from the back just like you would to begin any piece. And you're going to take your needle and your string and wrap it around your needle. Depending on how big you want the knot to be is how many times you wrap around. Uh, I don't want these to be too large, so I'll just do two. So two wraps. And then you go right back in to the same hole that you came up into. And before you put it all the way, put your needle all the way through, you just pull on your string to tighten it up around your needle. Let's see if it'll focus. There we go. So you can see there are a few threads around the needle. And then you'll pull through. Oh, I need to... And just keep it tight while you're pulling it through and then boom you got a little little knot and uh, to secure them I come back up right next to it so very close right next to it and then go right back down in through the center. It will be a little resistance. There we go. Oh, I was a little far away, but that's okay. So you can actually even see, yeah, I was a little far away. That's a little knot. So we're gonna do the exact same thing right over where the second dot is. So come right back up. Oh, I lost my thread. <laughs> How'd that happen? Try it. Yep, there we go. Let's try that again. So we're going to come up. Through the hole. Let me silence my phone. Sorry about that. <clears throat> and then I have to put
put it down so I can wrap it. One, two, go right back into the hole that we first just came up into, pull your thread tight. I'd like to push it down a little, down closer to your piece. Keep it secure with your thumb and just pull your needle through. Just like that. Okay, two cute little cute little dots or knots, whatever the whatever you want to call them. And then to secure it, we're just gonna come up close to it, closer than what I did before. <laughs> Pull and go right through that center. Oh, yeah, lots of bit. Sometimes it has more resistance than others. Hang on, doesn't want to go through. I'm just going to use this and push through because my thumb isn't that strong. None of my fingers are rather strong. And I'm just going to push it. There we go. It just needed some assistance. <laughs> Just because there's already a lot of string going on right there. Oh, and I was fighting against the tail. There's just a lot going on right there. So it does. Um, oh. I had a little knot, I think. That's what it was. So I had a knot going on back here. Let's see. <clears throat> Oh, it's already a mess. It's inevitable. <laughs> but, all right, but that's that. Now we're just going to tie it off. Make those two little dots. To represent those two deaths. Hopefully it won't be too many, but <laughs> I am playing on Death March, so... Definitely could happen, or definitely more will happen. All right. Do another little tie off. there to snip and that's it with the red now the red is this uh, cherry red I'm gonna have to remember that it is 321 just going to rewrap There we go. All right. So we'll set that aside. All right. So that is where we are. Now we can start working on the little house. Now the base of the house, I, like I said, I chose this like gray blue. Thought it looked really nice for winter. And I already have two threads ready, very short. So it won't get us too far, but at least I can use it. And I have plenty more. So. Now we did our knot.
thread is a needle. <clears throat> so I'm planning on having this part be a little chimney. We can have it come down along the side and then this um, base right here will also be the chimney. Let me actually do it this way to show you. So here's our chimney come up the side of the house. Um, I'm going to have this color be the body so I'm just going to go in a line around up here the base this side of the house and then the rooftop I'm not going to fill it in um, but it'll just be the outline of the house I was contemplating having the roof a different color but I figured snow would be on top of the roof so it would be that light blue anyways so to start, we're just coming up. There we go. And we're just going to follow this top line to start the roof. <clears throat> now this blue, these blue lines um, are water um, disappearing ink so whenever I get this wet the blue will dissipate now if you don't use enough water it doesn't get at all and there will be a slight blue tint you can kind of see right here all I have to do that was from me trying to clear this out the water spread throughout the um, entire piece just because cotton is very uh, lets water move rather quickly throughout the piece so it only went to here and you can actually see where the line stops so whenever I do this again and finish all of these lines I will get the entire piece wet and all that blue will just disappear it's a great um, great little pen now for the house uh, in the outline I am just going to do some simple back stitching and here I'll walk through that when I finish this. So to do back stitch, you're going to come up. Can you see my needle? <laughs> you're just going to come up through your piece as like you would start anything any piece. Make your your line. You just go in trying to keep them pretty much the same. There's one. Now you're going to skip ahead a little bit. So you can kind of see where I am now. It's hard to tell since I chose a color so similar to the pen color. You're just going to do about the same space as your line before. So this space was skipped, but what you're doing is you're going to work back. So you're going to go up a little bit and then back into the hole that touches and connects your your yarn or your thread sorry about that keep saying that <clears throat> that's a back stitch and you would just keep so to can you continue this line you would then come back up into the point that you just were at Here. but since we're doing this house I'm actually going to go down here and we're just going to start working down the body of the house. My tail's a little short. I'm going to lose it. There we go. Come back up to the hole we just were at. and continue going down. This thread might be just enough. So we're going to skip a bit of space. And 
and then go back into the hole that we were just, oh, I knew it. <laughs> My tail was very short. Let's see if I can rethread it while it's in the project. Nice. All right. So we're just going to pull that through. All right. So now we have the roof and then one side of the body. Having trouble focusing there. All right, now we're going to go back up into this corner and we'll work on this base. So we're just going straight across. Across. <clears throat> I'll just make that two. So right there, then we're going to come back up. Maybe. <laughs> Having trouble figuring out where I'm coming up. There we go. And back down in. Come back up the hole. And now the bottom's done. And now we just have to go straight up and that'll be done with the blue. Right about there. So, uh, if you, anyone is interested, the question of the day is uh, new. Nice uh, chat command. Here, I'll do my... Oh. Right there. And question of the day... Oops, if I can do it right is if you're working on any crafts, I'd love to hear about it. Always fun to share and um, I just love any kind of creation or any kind of project. It's always fun to see what everyone else is working on. Um, really any kind of art medium is always so fun to learn about. Uh, it's hard for me to stick to one, one type of thing because I just always want to keep learning new new ways to create. Um, but yeah, if anyone's working on anything, I'd always love to hear about them. I'm sure lots of people were doing tons of crafts, crafts over the holidays because it's so fun to make gifts for people. So that I always try and do for um, the holidays. But that's it. We're all do done with that. <laughs> I guess it wasn't smart of me to choose a color so close to the, the pen color. But when I wash it out, it, that blue will really really pop. Now I think, yeah, I think that's all the blue I'll need. So, oh, why, why did my not, what happened there? For some reason, um, Well, I'll just knot it right there. <clears throat> I don't know why it didn't pull all the way through. All right, I'm just going to tie off. Just 
try and make a knot. <laughs> and really when you tie off, it's whatever you feel comfortable with. How many knots you want to do. recommend at least two, but I kind of do overdo it. But that's my preference. <laughs> I just don't want it to go anywhere. One more. And I'm trying to make sure that this extra string is more secure. I don't know. Uh... All right. So now we're all done with the 807. Ooh. Does not want to focus on that. There we go. <laughs> it was really pretty. It's uh reminds me of like ice. All right. Now, uh what I was going to do with these is uh just do the full door, so fill the door in and then I was going to do an outline of the window because I wanted to uh oh, where'd my yellow go? That little string, where'd it go? It's gone forever. I have extra, I just wanted to try and use that little, that small amount. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Let me try and set that aside so I don't lose it again. So this is only a one string. This is only a single thread that I had extra of. Um, usually I work in two, so let's go ahead. I can try and do that. Again, not the end. And since it's a one string, I'm going to have to do quite a few just so it doesn't come up through the cotton. And one thread will be good for just an outline, especially on that window. It's going to take quite a few passes for the door to fill that all the way in. So we'll do a first an outline and then see how it looks. Oops, missed my knot. All right, at least a decent size knot so it doesn't come up through. All right, let's go ahead and start on the window. And I did have it as a circle, but maybe I should do a square. Oh, and that's why you have a lot of knot, a big knot on the end, because, yeah, the single thread does not usually have a big enough knot. So I already did four. I'm probably going to have to do let's do two more. That one did not catch my knot. So you can actually see, maybe, it takes a second to focus here. So I do have a rather large knot and right below it you can see the one I missed and that is a single knot. So you can see the size difference when it comes to, oh, sorry, my I tear at my hands. <clears throat> so you can see that you do really have to double up the knot just to make sure it does not come through your project like it just did. All right. <clears throat> and I do know that my uh, 
needle is quite large for what we're doing, but all my small needles, um, I always end up breaking them. There we go. of this light blue it's coming through there we go there we go so once again just doing a normal back stitch it's kind of it's my go-to <laughs> especially when you're just trying to create some lines I'll try and think of uh, ways to utilize other stitches when we're doing more of these projects That's so why I wanted to do these little knots, because it's at least something a little different. That one is quite a bit smaller. That's okay. <laughs> the first one will be the most significant, because it was that crazy fall. I don't know what happened there. I was trying to push spam B, which is the jump button, and ended up just jumping off the cliff. It was wonderful. <laughs> Happens to all of us. I have friends in chat were saying how uh, they uh, first fall or their first deaths in game is always falling because they like to test the fall damage height, which is probably a good idea. I just figure I'll figure it out sooner or later. <laughs> oh man. What is going on back here? Wow. All right. Well, good thing the back doesn't matter how pretty it looks. And to finish up the window, we're just going right back into the hole that we first came up through. It's a very fine line. But you can see it's a kind of like a diamond. Or it's really just a, a square. And then we will put a uh, same stitch that we did here is going to go right in here, but with that yellow. So I'm hoping it'll kind of create like a glow look. Just a... Hey, the lights are on. All right, so now we'll go down to the door. Actually, before we do that, I am going to make a little roof action here. So I'm going to go up right along or right below this roof stitch I did and hope it will look like there's a roof under the ice. If I can even... goodness can't get in the hole here let's just start on this side there we go and since it's a single thread it won't be too noticeable just a slight little line showing a little bit of dark almost a shadow. Well, there will be one side. So it just put a little line under the blue.
All right. <laughs> Where did I end off? Up on the top, so I need to go back down into that one. Right there. All right. Now we can work on that door. And we're going to come down and I'm going to first do the outline and see how that looks. There we go. Go back over here and there we go. Cute little house. <laughs> and huh, I kind of like it when it's open like that. Maybe I will just leave it like that. And then we can just, yep, I'm going to leave it like that. I'm not going to fill it in. All right, <clears throat> so tie off. And then I'll do the yellow. At least three with this little thread, single thread. There we go. And that's it. Oop. <laughs> As I just drop Move that over there. Ah. There we go. All right. Now onto this yellow. Okay. So whenever I do knots and I accidentally, I have one knot already in place and I accidentally do it too low, I just kind of pull up with my needle to move the knot that I just did closer to the existing one so it catches it and makes it add, makes the knot bigger. There we go. All right. Now this is just one. one knot. We're just coming up through the center of that window and we're doing the exact same thing we did on these red dots. One, two, go right down into the hole we just came up, pull tight, Hold down with your thumb, push needle through, and then I pull it out through the back. Got some resistance because there's a mess back there. There we go. And right back, just like that. So it is kind of hiding some of those, the outlines. So maybe I should have done a smaller Instead of two, I could have just done one. I can try. Let's do that. And it does, it pretty much creates a knot, which it succeeded, <laughs> which means 
do it in again. Yeah, so instead of what we did here was two circles, I'm going to just try and do one, and it's going to make a very small, much smaller knot. All right, come up right through the hole we had just made. Try that again. Also, I probably could have just um, taken these two because there are two threads. So I could have made it a smaller uh, thread count instead of having two. But since it's already two, I figured. Oh, it did not. Oh, I did not like that. All right. So in that case, I am going to do that. Exactly what I said. I am going to. Take this apart. Oh, I thought I thought I trimmed my knot. I guess I did not. <laughs> I did not trim my knot. Move that over there. <laughs> the short string uh, thread just keeps getting thinner or shorter and shorter. Good thing I just need to make one little knot and we'll be good. Didn't catch my knot, so I'll try that again. Let's try that. Third time's a charm. Okay. One, two, and right back in. Oh yeah, that's what I should have done. There we go. Oh, I think, I think what's happening is that my needle is so big that it is pulling it through. Hmm. Might just have to skip the yellow. Let's try again. All right, I'm not gonna pull. I am not gonna pull it so tight, and then hopefully I can secure it. All right, so it's barely there. Oh, I'm gonna come back up underneath it. There we go. And then I am going to go back down in through the center and hopefully it'll stay. Just don't normally work with one, one thread. Oh, 
right through the center. Hmm, there we go. Okay. It's there. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell, but it is there. Just a slight little light. All right. I'm going to tie off again. And we'll finish with the chimney. finishing colors over here. You can see this is for the, the death count, house base, window and door outline. I will rewrap that. And now we're doing this gorgeous rose color for um, the chimney. I wanted to do muted colors just because everything is a bit more muted in winter. I guess it depends on where you live, but... All right, so currently working on 37.22. And I'm gonna pull two threads, it's just There we go. There's our extra. Kind of untwist itself. Woo! <laughs> All right, and going to knot off. Also, um, another command I did was the fun fact uh, command. If you do fun fact try and been keeping them about uh, whatever I'm working on. And since we're doing an embroidery project, I figure I could, the earliest embroidery item was just um, for fossilized clothing that traced back to the Cro-Magnet days, which was about 30,000 BC. It's crazy. I can't believe like a fabric material. I mean, I guess it's fossilized. Um, I wonder what the oldest still remaining cloth is. Um, just like learning new things, but I, I thought that was so interesting. Um, that they wanted to have their clothing items decorated. And that they were, uh, the, on last Sunday, our fun fact was the oldest um, needle was actually bones. And um, so yeah, so those items were probably used with, uh, with bones that they shaped into needles. And then I wonder what they used for the thread. I guess if they had clothing, they would just pull apart individual pieces of thread, maybe um, plant fiber material, plant material. But, oh right, so. With this red, we're just going to be putting a little chimney top on top and then I'm going to run it right down the side and then kind of have it pop out the base right there. And that'll be our little house. Oh, so cute. But man, I don't think I could work with a little uh, a bone needle. I can... Like I said, I keep, I always break even the small little needles far too often. I'd be constantly breaking bone needles. Oh, they're probably very delicate. All right. So we're just going straight up and then we'll go over 
And again, just doing uh, simple back stitching just to create a line, an outline, I guess. Just like that. Come back up on the end we just came up from. And then we'll work down. And I am going to be going behind the roof so that it, because it is behind, you know, so it looks like that. So we're just going to go down to the rooftop. <laughs> Christmas is over, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then we're gonna come back up below the roof. Um, in the hole, if I can find it, that we did that underline, we did a little shadow with the single line of this uh, 931. I'm gonna try and come up into the hole that that one is, right there. And then we're just following right along the side. Yep, just like that. So you can see that it actually goes behind the roof. Now I'm gonna pop out to the side, and create this base of the chimney. <clears throat> and go back down there we go so it's just slightly off and then we're going right down and connecting to the base of the house Oh, that one was a little long. That is here. Actually, I will undo that. And we can just do a single line down. I think that will look the best. All right. I still need to come up with ideas. I have a few icon ideas for <clears throat> other icons that I could do throughout the year. I'm thinking um, like a few weather ones. I have to do some plants. There's so many food options. It's gonna be so much fun, but there we go. That's a little, little house with a little chimney outline. Let's see here. Focus camera. There we go. <laughs> and uh, like I said, that blue really kind of hides the uh, the colors of the house, but hopefully it'll it'll pop once I wash all that off. <clears throat> all right. So I'm gonna tie off. And we'll be able to work on the rest of these lines. And there we go. And I'll rewrap these off stream. There we go. Now we're going to the black. All right. That's what we got. So um, I am going to do, I'll do this 20, 23 first, and then I will work on the rest of the lines. And then we'll do the rest of these months. Hmm, that house, I kind of pulled a bit too much on that house. All right. 
Oh, it's thread. So I know I'm going to need a lot, so we'll do an arm's length. Just because, as you can see, I have a tendency to create knots. <laughs> like I said, thank goodness the back doesn't matter. <laughs> and since this thread is so thick, I probably just need one, but I will do two. There we go. All right. Okay, this one I am going to need a needle threader for. Oh, <laughs> I already got stuck. Ah, there we go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and you pull through. And these are great little tools. I, I have some like hand mobility problems. And so uh, even if you don't, like these are just so good, especially on small, the smaller the eye of the needle. Oh, sometimes it's just so difficult to, to thread it. But we got it. All right. So we're going to start down here at the two. There we go. I wonder how long it's going to take everybody to get used to saying 2023. I guess it depends on how often you're you're saying it and if you have to write the date every day. I don't know if you have to do that in schools, if you have to write the year, but I guess if you're writing it more often, it's easier to remember that it is a brand new year, but oh my goodness, I always remember it taking, it still takes me like, oh yes, it is 20, it's a new year, <laughs> change that date. There we go. <laughs> All right. We got a two. <laughs> All right. So, uh, like I was saying, I like doing all kinds of different crafts and projects and stuff. And so, uh, whenever we'll be adding to this, uh, at the beginning of every stream, but, um, Sundays I'm going to do different projects. I think next Sunday I'll be working on a crochet hat, like a little um, ornament hat. They're so cute. I gave them as gifts to friends and family a few years ago. And uh, whenever I visit them, they're on their tree. I, I feel so, I'm like, oh my gosh, you hang that little hat up. Ah. <laughs> um, I, we have a pyrography project in the works. Uh, Going to be a little wood ornament. I like ornaments. They're, it's nice to be able to make small projects like that because I can finish them in a sitting and then walk away versus like a big blanket or a scarf that uh, takes a lot of time. 
make sure I'm not having a knot, um, where you have to step away and then come back, pick it right back up. I, um, I feel more accomplished with making a bunch of little things. So there's the zero. It's a little smaller than the two. I guess it's more of a diamond than a zero, but it's it's there. It, it works. And now we'll work on this 23. But um, yeah, uh, so doing some crochet, like I was saying. We'll have a pyrography project. Um, my device does do a little buzz action, uh, so hopefully that doesn't get picked up on the microphone, but we'll see. We won't know until we try. Um, but I want to show you guys that because I love uh, pyrography. I think it's a lot of fun, and I even do it on watercolor paper, and then I will paint, um, you know, use watercolor and uh, do it that way. And I just, I think it's very versatile and a lot of fun, just a little different. Um, and then after that, maybe do like a scratch board piece. I do love scratch board as well. Oh, we got a knot. Hang on. Pause. Got to get this knot. There we go. Um, I have this. It's pretty cheap paper, but the back. So usually when you get scratch board paper, it's white. It's like um, layered. Uh, the base is a back paper. Um, and then you get a little small layer of, I believe it's um, clay. And it's usually white. And then on top of that is a layer of black. And what you do is you're scratching away the black to reveal the white. Um, I do know that they have inks uh, that you can use to dye that white, but um, just for fun to play around, I got this cheap uh, paper, and but they come in different colors. So I have a green, blue, red, yellow, um, and then white did come with it as well. Um, it's very sensitive, so like one little, I can't do like shading as well with it, um, and my scratch pen, uh, I do need to replace the tip. Uh, for my pen, but um, it's fun to work with different colors. I was doing uh, Pokemon the first time uh, I was playing with them because they those colors work so perfectly with the Pokemon characters. Um, so of course I did Pikachu. Oh, I had pink as well because I did a Jigglypuff and uh, Mew. Um, or no, Mewtwo. I'm sorry, guys. I'm actually a Digimon fan but the Pokemon just screamed at me when I was uh, trying to think of project uh, craft ideas with the scratch board. And I was like, they're perfect because they are those colors. They represent different elements. So you know, you do um, each of them represent like water and earth. I mean, I'm sure you guys know more than me, <laughs> but uh they were, they came out so cute and they were a lot of fun to do. Um, I was trying to, I wanted to do all the starters with um, each of those colors. So that'll be a, a project down the road. Maybe I'll stream that one of these days. We can do, um, bring out each of the colors and then I can scratch out each of them. I just, uh, the starters are, I'm pretty sure, are always only water, grass, and fire. And I also have the pink in there as well. And um, that's why I wanted to do the Jigglypuff. Oh, I did a Cubone as well, of course. It's cute little, cute little guy with the saddest backstory ever. Oh. But... Um, what I'm planning on doing is just doing like a winter scene with the blue. I thought that would be really pretty. Um, yeah, we're working on this three. Um, other things I think I'll be doing, let's see. I do love charcoal as well. Um, 
I do just like lay down charcoal, but I also love doing erase highlight. So where you just layer an entire piece of paper with charcoal and then you erase it and create the highlights and it becomes a black and white piece but instead of a white being in your background it's black and your lines are and your pictures represented through the highlights that you create all right almost done with this three I just love making new things. <laughs> oh, I did not come up the right, the same hole. Redo that. Oh, and I'm going to need that threader again. Okay, and pull through. There we go. Try that again. I keep coming up through and missing the wrong. Just catch this one little piece of thread that does not want to. Oh, I'll hide it. It might just look a little weird. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not, I do not like that. <clears throat> okay, let me try this. So I think I did uh, maybe come up a little too far. There we go. See, can I thread it without the threader? Oh, yes, I did it. <laughs> oh, I did it, but I pulled the thread out a little. Whoops. That's a future me problem. <laughs> There we go. Oh, I did it again. All right, it's happening. <laughs> Stuck on this three for far too long. All right, and that's our year. Three is quite a bit larger. So it'll look, so this will be the top, yeah. Now, I'm gonna work on this line, right here. <laughs> and now the boring part. <laughs> Doing straight lines. Boring but easy because it's just a simple back stitch. Just want to try and make sure that my 
lines are the same length as what we did last Sunday. It's a little small. Hang on. All right, back up through the hole we just were on. <clears throat> Wow, I am not doing good at coming back up the holes as intended. So you can see there's a bit of a space and I'm slightly off. Yeah, wow. I'm off my game. <laughs> oh, that's right. You have to take it off of the thread needle first before you do that. There we go. Wow. Alright, yeah, I need to use the threader. There we go. Thank goodness for this little device. <laughs> All right, let's come back up the hole. There we go. And we're just going right up to create a line like that. So uh, what I was mentioning about the houses I represent this little guy. Um, I uh, was only able to do the outline of the first house. So I'm still going to post it on Instagram so you guys can see it. But uh, I do want to eventually fill it in, make it a whole like winter scene, some simple shading, nothing crazy. but just to give it a little pop of color. Because, yeah, right now it's just a black and white sketch. <laughs> or not sketch, outline. But it was fun. I drew little icicles and everything. And then um, I know the holiday seasons are over, but put little wreaths. and um, those will be fun to like bring color to the image as well. But it's going to be a lot of fun doing the spring one with all the flowers. Ooh, so much color. I'm not sure what I will do different for the summer. Maybe maybe different plants around it or instead of maybe like full trees behind it um, or all the plants I could do like partially budding plants in the spring that's when everything's kind of popping in um, and then have everything like be full in the summer but I'm not really sure how I'm going to distinguish between spring and summer at the moment. Fall will be easy. It'll just be like fall leaves everywhere, leaves on the ground. It's going to be um, a bit darker as well. Just darker time of year. Oh, man. Can't believe how early it gets sometimes. You just always forget. Oh yeah, it's winter. Sunsets rather early. Oh, 
That's our back. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Oh. oh no, we're okay. Didn't think I came through. All right. <clears throat> right there. Oh, I was so excited playing The Witcher again. I think um, the last time I played, besides starting this year, gosh, it was probably two years ago. This is one of those games I like to go back to ever since I first played it. And, oh, just a world I can completely disappear into. <laughs> I didn't even realize how long I had been playing for. I think um, I streamed for like five or six hours. Last, uh, maybe contemplating hmm. yeah, I'm rather close I guess I should start doing the months oh, we got one line down Okay, and kind of hard to do because I have the back of the hoop right there. Just have to kind of come at it at an angle. This guy. Oh, there we go. Uh, but like I was saying, it was so great, like going back into The Witcher. I was remembering things as I was playing them and just being like, oh yeah, there's a chest here. I'm surprised how much I really do remember. But it is, I think, my fourth full playthrough. I've started it. Uh, first time I played, I started it. And I think I only made it to Velen when I first did it and didn't continue. And then I went back in, fell in love, and just like played it all the way through. Um, and then right after that playthrough, I went into Death March and played it all the way again, right back to back. Um, there's the R. And then I played it again just to you know, go back into the world. I've done that with Skyrim. I, um, Elder Scrolls Skyrim. That's the only one I've ever played. I think I, like, went online once when they were doing, like, a free offer. Um, actually, might, we might own it now. But it's just the the world isn't as pretty uh, the characters are great the story is a lot of fun i just i just love how bright and vibrant the world is and since cd project red did that update oh my gosh everything is like even more gorgeous it's crisper and i'm i'm playing on the xbox i can only imagine like how different it is on the pc um cuz i do know that you know, graphics are much better and, you know, 
computers can process a lot more than any of the consoles can. Let's see. Oh, just poked myself. <laughs> I'm a little close to the M. We'll just push that M a little bit further over. Um, but just so impressed that with all the updates they did, I'm not sure what they did, like if they fixed glitches or what what that what they did with that. But I do know that they just made um, the world a bit more vibrant. I think they took other individuals' mods and um, applied them to the actual game. I've never played The Witcher modded before. Um, I did try Skyrim uh, modded, which I do wanna get back into that and play that modded version more. And again, that's only on Xbox, so it's not even all the, as many mods as you can do on PC. I know that there are some crazy mods out there. It's so impressive that people just are able to create those. First time I played Fallout 4, I uh, only played it with mods. And now when I've tried to play Fallout 4 without mods, I can't, I don't know, I can't do it. Because <laughs> there are mods in the that really just like help with the map and your little like... Um, your weapons and there are certain things that are just really like kind of help the game and after playing it with that it's just like kind of frustrating without them all right but i should try and play fallout 4 without the mods i do really enjoy achievement hunting and uh, you can't achievement hunt if you mod your game <laughs> so one of these days I'll have to actually play Fallout 4 just the way it was meant to be so that uh, I can get all those achievements and maybe 100% it I do enjoy 100%ing. Ah, that M is a bit off. I'm going to redo that. There we go. There we go. Oh, that M should have been a bit further up. Oh, sorry. So this M I probably should have put up here. Oh my goodness, can't get into the where I want it. Let's see how that looks. Hmm? Better.
and back down. All right. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit off, but that's okay. It's good enough, right? <laughs> All right. Now we'll go to the February. Do that. Oh, another game I did achievement hunting was the Assassin's Creed games, which I need to go and uh, play the originals for sure, because I've only done the open worlds. I really love open world games. And um, I've only, yeah, I only played the new Assassin's Creed, the Origins, uh, Odyssey, and Valhalla, which were all great, but I feel like since I, um, those are my only experiences, I should go back and play the original, or the originals, there are so many. Um, Oh, I always hear great things about Black Flag. That is one that is on my list, but it'd be fun to just go through them all. I feel like um, I didn't really even understand or realize the the meaning or or understand like really what was going on with the them being you know actually going through time and getting the the genetic code i guess of an ancestor or um of someone and then living through their experiences i understood it but i, f I feel like the the first few would be really good at um explaining that better or having more gameplay around that um, Odyssey's DLC was uh, good. I guess they kind of did a bit more with that, but I was still a bit confused. <laughs> and any time that happened, I was just like, "Oh, get me back into the 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 game world. I don't I don't want to deal with this right now." It wasn't as fun. And I, I there were some times they would like push you back and I didn't even understand why, like what was going on or what what the purpose was for pushing. Um, I guess just to give you a break and be like, hey, you're in a simulation, remember? <laughs> so there's the B. It almost looks like an eight, oops. There we go. I'm trying to make sure that I get them all relatively the same distance, but I know I did this January a lot higher. So I'm just trying to keep it as consistent as I can. Just by eyeballing it. My everything that's what this little dot is for I noticed when I drew it out it was kind of shifted too far and I didn't even realize so I'm gonna move the E make the E a little bit bigger shift it over and then my F will just be moved over a bit more as well won't be exactly so none of nothing's gonna be exactly centered but Let's do that in two versus three. Go down just a little bit. And back down at an angle. There we go.
It's a bit off. Maybe I should move it over just a little. Just a little bit. There we go. And coming back up. off that E. So oh, E's a little big. Ready? <laughs> the same length maybe a little short but we'll see All right. And last little guy on the F. And since this thread is already pretty short, I am just going to grab another. There we go. January, February, March. So then I will work on April. And then I'll probably, mm, let's see, let's get a game plan here. I can work on December, go down the line, come back up, and then do April. Or April, go back down. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. We'll do April, go back down, and then work that way. And try and not have too much string left over. I guess I might be able to reach another. Hmm. I'd rather tie it off though with how much string there is and then start another area with it. Just because anywhere I'm going to have to reach is going to be more than if I just tied it off. Going to not there we go. Oh, I didn't need to do three with this big. Big thread. <laughs> but like I mentioned in uh, Sunbay, I also keep the extra threads because they're good for stuffing. It is a smaller uh, yarn is better for that, but if you get enough of them, they, they, they take up some space. And there are projects like embroidery that you just need to fill in to kind of make it puff up. So you can use this and fill it. Um, 
with your extra yarn and then stitch over it and it kind of it makes it look like it's raised or it doesn't make it is raised it forces the thread to be raised up um, maybe I'll do do something that uh, requires that on here that'll be a fun little different uh, stitch to do okay let's get more black and tie a knot. So next Tuesday we'll, um, we'll go back into Witcher 3 and we're at the point where I'll be taking on the Griffin and White Orchard. So that'll be the first time we use the spinning wheel, the wheel to decide um, I guess if we take the money or, or don't for the Griffin contract and I'm interested to see how that works out and then after that because I did choose to incorporate um, Witcher 2 questions I guess I've never played Witcher 2 which I really need to um, I know they're going to be doing a remaster of Witcher 1, so maybe I should just wait for them to remaster Witcher 2, but man, I hear it's, it's, I mean, it's an older game, so I'm sure it's, um, a bit rough, but I've heard that Witcher 1 is very rough, um, so I don't think I'd go back to play that, but... I've heard that Witcher 2 is pretty underrated. It's still rough, but I mean, that's just probably the for its time. Um, I don't, I've never really played any older games. I guess Skyrim Elder, Elder Scrolls is the oldest game I've ever played. And I played it recently or I've been playing it recently, so they do have, like, fix it. It's, by the time I got into it, it was already fixed and, you know, remastered, or not remastered, but um, I guess it might, I guess the term is remastered, um, just to make it a bit more crisp, like, visually, a bit more smooth. So I don't know if, when they'll be redoing Witcher 1, but if it's soon and they do plan on redoing Witcher 2, then maybe I will just wait. But won't know until they release or release some more information. <laughs> I'm sure it takes a long time. I don't know if they are... like just remastering it to make it like look better I guess and like move you know the gameplay is easier to do or if they're just completely redoing it and making it more like Witcher 3 but keeping the same storyline and overall uh, characters the same and everything like that like converse maybe even the conversations the same maybe adding a few more dialogue I know I, I really enjoy the having different options like uh, ending options depending on like how you respond to things I don't know if that's in the original witchers uh, witcher games but if it isn't that would be really cool if they added that mechanic in um, I've never I don't know anything about them but it would be nice to see a complete like redo of the game so it's turned into more of an open world like Witcher 3 um, 
I believe they're also just making a whole new Witcher Witcher 4 as well, which is, I believe, of another school. Maybe the Cats, the Cat School. I've only heard rumors online about that because I think they just released like a, a picture of a medallion like sticking out of snow or something like that. And um, it's like a little teaser. But I'm excited for that. <laughs> All right. I'm trying to come up through the same hole. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. It didn't seem like it was. Wow, this black frays so much. I'm getting like little black fuzzies all over everything. Lint roller, where are you? P is a little small. Maybe. It's okay. Try and make it look like the March R. So I did the single line. Okay. Oh, what I was saying about the decision wheel um, is I'm going to try and use an overlay that has a little spinning wheel icon on it. So it'll actually be on the screen. You guys know I won't be uh, cheating or not choosing the actual correct choice. I know the, the Griffin choice isn't like story based decision, but I figured it was the, it's the first like timed decision. Eh, it's not exactly the same, but it, it's close. April. So now we'll do this line. <laughs> Can you guys see all the fuzzies? Well, it's hard to tell. <laughs> but, um,. So yeah, I'll, I'll have like a little wheel on, on the screen and that'll be the way I, I decide. What we're going to do, we're going all the way like that. Um, and if it works, which I, I hope it will, if it doesn't, I know there are, are ones online um, and I'm pretty sure I can like share a screen. I was just hoping that I could do it on this actual screen um, versus opening a completely different window and doing it that way. And it'll only be for um, major story-based decisions. Um, there are a few quest lines that 
uh, kind of affect, I believe, the story. And, of course, um, how we respond to Triss and Yennefer. Um, I'm going to let the game decide Geralt's love interest. Or, I'm sorry, I'm going to let the wheel decide Geralt's love interest as well. Straight lines are actually um, soothing. I have to like concentrate on the, the lettering here. I'm just like, oh yes, just do a straight line, simple backstitch, nothing to it. So need to um, start thinking about what I'm gonna do. Add another icon. It's getting pretty tight, and it's only the eighth. I really should not have made uh, this guy so big, but I didn't know how to. It, he's. It's a very detailed medallion. I didn't think, I guess I could have done a single thread like I did the outline here. I didn't really think about it. Kind of just went in and drew it out and sewed it on or embroidered it on. Um, But it's going to be tight. So since it is going to be tight, I probably will only do one embroidery on top of um, for the week ahead of uh, before each, before I start uh, going back into the Witcher. Could have just made the whole entire hoop bigger. Then I could have all the room in the world. <laughs> yeah, the the ones that do 365 little embroidery things, I they must be they must be quite large um, compared to this. I, this is only a what an eight inch. Um, Hoop. But this is the amount only amount of fabric I had, and so I had to kind of just work with what I had. And maybe um on Thursdays I can just add up my little dots, and that's what I'll do. So or I can do at the beginning of Tuesday's stream, do something small, and then the end of Thursday's stream, add the dots for Tuesday and Thursday's deaths. If I even get any. <laughs> I, I still cannot believe that my first death was a fall death. I, I don't know why I was spamming B. That little clip is hilarious. I just, um... I don't know what I was doing. I was just like trying to jump up on this ledge and just kept spamming B. <laughs> um, so embarrassing. <laughs> All right, so we did that line for April coming together. And so now we're gonna go up this way and back to December. So up through this center. Oh, it's tight. There's a lot of thread right there. Ah, there we go. So 
And we're going up like that. But I hope the decision wheel works. Um, it's going to be hilarious if I end up getting a good ending from the decision wheel. Because I always have to play the good guy and try and answer it as... Um, oh, it didn't come up the right hole. Hang on. Here we go. Um, So I'm hoping the wheel will force me to... Oh my gosh, I keep missing this. Oh no, we're okay. Um, I'm hoping the wheel will force me to pick things that I've never been able to, you know, convince, like get myself to do. I know it's a game. I know it doesn't matter. But... I don't know. If I know I'm going for Yennefer, then I make sure that I pick the right things to get Yennefer, and vice versa with Triss. I know that there is, like, a different ending if you kind of play them both, but I, I haven't ever done that. And then same with, like, all of series things. I've never um, been able to convince myself to just, it's okay, get the bad ending just to see. So I'm, oh, I got a knot. Oh wait, what's going on here? Oh no, that's from another line. Sorry. <laughs> But, jeez, wouldn't that be my luck if put all that effort into making, getting the wheel to, to, um, end up getting, uh, the same ending I always, always get. <laughs> I think online, um, it says that there's like 32 different endings, like different things that you can get, but I think that includes like quest, other quest lines and then the romantic options and stuff like that. If I remember correctly, there's only six like main story endings or maybe only three i i'm not 100 percent sure and i don't i don't want to look too far ahead to like see what answers are going to get me what because um i have an idea of like i i know what i need to choose to do the good ones because i've that's the only that's the options i've always done but um I'm not really sure what happens when you do like some good and some bad and then you do or like all bad or and what option what which ones are the bad ones I we'll see and um with the whole witcher 2 questioning I'm not even sure what that affects either I, th I think it affects some quest lines but I'm not really sure which quest lines they affect and like do those quests affect the overall story. Um, I'm not sure. But we're only in the beginning. We've only just begun. Oh, hey Scotty, I'm sorry. I didn't, I really need like a thing that when I'm in the zone and I'm just like talking to myself, I'm so sorry. Um, I'm just looking down at my embroidery, just doing these backstitch lines, just rambling on. I'm sorry if you were just like, oh, I guess you'll never see my little thing. I, I wonder if there's a way in the chat I can make it like ding at me and be like, hey, hey, 
someone just said something. <laughs> but how are you doing? How's your Sunday? I hope it's okay. You're not freezing. Actually, I think the whole, whole U.S. is pretty much getting like a whole warm front. Very weird weather going on this, this time of year. It's still too cold for me. I want 80 degrees all year round. <laughs> but thank you for coming on by. We're just, um, I'm just working on this embroidery journal that I started last uh, Sunday. So what we're able to do was I did like six of these little lines and then all I did Sunday was the January and then the little twitch. Then last Thursday when I started the Witcher, I did this guy. Um, he's a bit bigger than what I intended for, but with all that detail, he, I didn't know how else to get the detail of it without making it larger. Uh, oh, it's in the 30s. Oh, goodness, no. Stay inside to bundle up with some tea or coffee and a blanket. Oh, no, thank you. Um, and then... Uh, so, I've decided these little two dots are representing of the deaths. So, I'm playing in Death March and I'm tracking all my deaths for the game. And last Thursday I died twice, so I put little two little dots right there. Now, let's see if I can get close so you can kind of see the... Uh, how do I get it to focus? Right there. So they're just little little dots. And then um, we did this little house today because I'm going to be drawing a few houses in like a digital art. Um, I've only been able to do outlines of them, but eventually I want to do little houses in like snow scenes since it is winter. Um, and then I'll do the houses like in spring theme in May. In summer, I'll do them in summer scenes, and then same with fall over here. So I thought the blue kind of represented ice and cold, and it has a little chimney, and then a little window with a little white, a little light, and then the little door. Um, but the rest of what we're doing is just whatever you see in blue that's uh, not done. So working my way up here, and I'm about to go to December. Ah, slow going. I don't know how I'm going to be able to fit the rest of the month in here, <laughs> especially since I made that guy so big. Ugh. I was thinking maybe just doing adding onto it once a week, or I'm sorry, Sunday, and then maybe Tuesdays as well. We'll see. And then Thursdays after the stream, I can add the little dots um, just to represent the deaths that I had for that week. We'll see. It is a bit a bit crowded, and it's going to be even harder down here. I hope it snows just so I can put little snowflakes down here without... Um, I have to brainstorm some more ideas of, like, small icons and stuff. All I've really looked into were weather and um, oh, I got a string coming through. Got a lot of fray action going on. But that's inevitable. Ah, there we go. But I'm glad you're doing good. I'm not having a bad day. Um, oh, I have a... Oh, look at that. I completely uh, missed. Oh, wow. Yeah, let me redo that. There we go. Um, I have a question of the day. And I don't know if you're a crafty individual, but... Um, Uh, just wondering if you're working on any fun projects. 
it's nice to just be able to, especially on cold days like today, it's nice to just stay inside and um, work on something just so you can stay inside. Oh my goodness, I need the threader. There we go. This thread hates me. Ugh. <laughs> All right. All right, when we finish this line, I'm gonna go over and hopefully I have enough thread to be able to do December. There we go. Oh yeah, I am. Um, I have all kinds of layers on, and these are they're more for compression. I have a lot of hand problems, and got my fun little wrist brace on, and I love working with my hands, but sometimes my hands don't like working with me. <laughs> Uh, it's, um, I have a bunch of, uh, autoimmune stuff that, uh, focuses on joints. So it's kind of like intense, um, arthritis, um, like lots of inflammation and joint swelling and stuff like that. No fun. <laughs> and then I, uh, I get fun Raynaud's, which is where your blood doesn't circulate um, properly, so they, my hands like to turn colors and purple, and I, I can get it so bad it goes, they go white, and I have no feeling in my hands. It's kind of frustrating, well, it's not kind of, it's very frustrating when, like, touch screens don't work anymore. <laughs> I'll, like, try and do think something on my, um, on my phone and my phone won't register my hands because there's no blood flow going to them. <laughs> I've even tried to use my nose in those points, but really any, like I lo I've lost feeling in my tongue before, multiple times with my tongue, it just turns white, can't talk. It's, you know, it's so fun just to deal with. Cold weather and I don't, don't get along. <laughs> Oh, you're right. oh no, back problems are so difficult. You can't, like some days you're just like, can't even walk. Like your back is incredibly important. Oh. Not good. Does your, your back, um, is it affected by the weather or anything? Because I, I know that Sometimes it, I guess it depends on if it's a disc or in in the um, muscle itself, or if it's a um, or the the bone itself. Oof, um, different parts of the back can really be affected by different things. I got the D. <laughs> got the D. My dad has a bunch of back problems. He's a painting contractor and oh my gosh, his poor back all the way up to his neck and then his uh, right shoulder. He can't even lift his arm all the way above him properly anymore because uh, of all the work that he's done. He used to, actually really cool, he used to do all the gold leaf and painting in Catholic churches. So when you go in and they're all like 
Oh, wait, here. I guess better. Oh, with high, yeah, high air pressure. The, yes, yep. Um, yeah, and this, so when a storm moves in, the pressure, you know, either shoots the roof or drops really low. Those sudden pressure changes. Oh, my God. Oh, my body hates them. And it does not, like, um, adapt quickly. So when storms come in, I'll have a lull of pain while the storm is going on, unless it's a fast-moving storm then the entire time, you know, just the different pressure changes. Oh my gosh. Just all that joint pain. But, um, yeah, my dad used to work on uh, churches and he'd have to build up all the scaffolding and then he'd lay on his back and just like be inches from the ceiling, padding gold leaf onto the ceiling. Oh my gosh, his poor neck and back. He, he is... He's still trying to work and do stuff, and um, I ch keep trying to tell him to take it easy and at least try and do things slower, but he is such a go-getter. It's hard for him to just not do anything. Accidentally didn't come up through the right hole. It's kind of hard working at this. Oh, it is too far. Dang. Hang on here. Oh, let me use this tool. I hardly ever use this thing. So when I mess up, I should be able to just pull it out. There. There. Yeah, it's still way too high. Oh, I also have a fun fact for today. <laughs> so, um, I've been trying to think of fun facts depending on whatever I'm working on. So, like when I'm playing Witcher, I'll try and get a fun fact about the game. Um, or something like that. But since I'm doing some embroidery, I thought I'd uh, make it about embroidery. It's always nice to learn something new. Alright, I have to use the thread. Thread the needle. There we go. Okay, let's try not to go as high. Let's go right there. Oh, I didn't get through both of the... So I do do a double layer of cloth, especially with lighter fabrics. You can see your thread through them. So I probably should have chosen a darker one because you can even still kind of see it. Um, just so that you can't see my back work as much. So you can see this line and that line, this one. You might be able to kind of see them through. Right there you can. But um, yeah, whenever I'm working, I try and have two layers. I know that you can have like actual backing material, but I think just cotton fabric works just fine. All right, we're gonna go down. Oh, 
And I think this string will work, or this thread will be just long enough. It's going to be close. that E a little off. It's a little up. That's okay. Gives it character. <laughs> All right, now the C. That's going to be right there. And then I'm going to do a little one straight. And then I'll match the base with those two. So I'll do come back up. And I'm going to try and match that angle. And then back down. Just like that. Huh? Does it look like a C? Kinda? <laughs> there we go. Alright, now I'm going to tie this off. Look at that. Just enough to tie off. Eh, even a little extra, but that's okay. Almost went under another one. All right. Oh, no, no, you're good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm just rambling. kind of talking my way through the process, probably repeating a lot, <laughs> especially when I start working on these lines. It's just not much to say, but, but I always keep my little extras. They're really good for stuffing. I got my colors right there from what I worked on earlier. All right. We finished December. Halfway there. Oh my goodness, and we're already two hours in. I don't know if my hands can take me doing all of this today. Maybe I'll at least finish these strings. But so yeah, I'll do August, work my way down. What do you what do you mean you do the same on crafts? Oh, just rain. Oh, walk your way through. Yeah. <laughs> what were you working on? What um what's your latest craft? Was it that uh was the Super Mario um was that a cross stitch? I haven't done a cross stitch in so long. I 
I love that um, they're coming out with cross stitch patterns and stuff like that for gaming items. I think that's such a good idea. So then you can make something of your own personally, like personalize it any way you want. And then um, and you can frame it and be like, I made this. <laughs> Gotta use this thing again. Oh. Come on, hands. There we go. Got you back into it. Nice. Yeah. That's um and when your your pattern is already there, it's it's just nice to just be able to like, okay, this color goes in here, this pattern goes here, and you're doing I guess cross stitch um there are certain like you can have a cross or a half or a little dot. Um Oh geez, this string went bouncing. Um, all right, I'm gonna go actually along here and we'll see how long this thread takes me. But if I can, that'd be nice to be able to go here and then down, but I don't think I have enough. I don't make them long enough to be able to do that here. Ooh, that's as long as my thread goes. Just cause I have, I get knots often this is just a mess it's those two little dots and i got a big old knot <laughs> with my red oh. are you going to be doing um any more cross stitch uh streams do you have any plans for anything upcoming or any uh any new kits that you're excited about I mean, if you don't want to spoil anything, I understand. I, if it's all a surprise, I gotcha. Yeah, I haven't done a cross stitch since I was probably in high school. But I kind of like, at, while I was in college, I really didn't do any crafts. I drew like once in a while, but you know, because of school and organizations and all of that, I I really wasn't creating as much as I was or used to. And even the drawing, I was having trouble like motivating or finding time, I should say, to uh, to actually do crafting or any or do any kind of drawing. I even <laughs> waste of money, I guess. Uh, I did an art class just to like get myself back into being artsy. Just kind of, I, I knew I loved it and I had an extra time, a slow semester. I was like, all right, I'm going to take this art class just to kind of force myself to create, make something. And that was fun. It was really laid back. I I was I don't even remember why there was only like four of us in I guess the advanced arts class and then so she had us all come in during her normal class and it was like at the same time she'd be teaching a normal lecture about like art the uh, theory and just like you know, the basics of art. And then the four of us in the back would just be like, on our own, doing our own thing. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess you don't need that much direction. You just need a reason to create. And so she just, I had to have, I had to make five different pieces 
by the by the end of the semester. And I I do enjoy doing a lot of mixed media. So I did like um I'd go out and find sticks and then I made this like circle piece of art that had sticks coming out of it and then I drew the sticks as well so it like blended in and then I glued them in and then I framed it and drilled holes into the side so that the sticks would come shooting out of the frame that was a fun piece but I moved around so much that it did not last it it, it uh, did not last a few moves it broke um, but just had to find or force myself to create in, in college and then after college you go straight into work and I never had time to do art when I was working full time it was so sad just have to kind of force myself to find time but now that I'm not working I get to create any time I want, which is all the time now. Now my problem is I have too many ideas and not enough time or materials to do them. <laughs> oh, that A is a little low. Let's see. All right. May. We're getting there. This Y is a little close to the A, so I am going to move it over just a smidge. Uh, there we go. Maybe. Mm, there we go. <laughs> it is hard working right along this back thing. I have to do everything at an angle when I hit that. But and I've accidentally only picked up one fabric, so I have to be careful with that. Ooh. Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> look what I just did there. Wrapping it around, not paying attention. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man. Whoops. Let's pull that out and try that again. And I need to thread. My needle. Okay. Go through the top. Uh, really tight there. All right, there's May. Oh. Now we're halfway done. <laughs> it's coming together. I'm going to jump over to June. Now, June and July, I know that there are only four letters, and usually the shorthand doesn't 
cut them off like, or there isn't like a usually a shorthand, but I wanted to keep it consistent. And this is just for me, so I get to make the decisions here. Backstitch. So, um, like I said, I'll be getting back into Witcher 3 this Tuesday. Unless, uh, I'm not feeling good or anything, but, um, Last time I played for about five hours on that, and I wonder how far we'll get into Velen, because we'll definitely reach, we'll definitely reach Velen, because you only hang out in um, Radovic's castle area for a little bit. You have to do the whole like, will you bow or will you not? And then, um, See here. I think I'm just gonna go down. Yeah. Um should I do that in two? Eh, we'll leave it. It's good. Um I'm trying to think if when you make it to Velen, if you when you get to the Bloody Baron. Oh, that, uh, storyline. Oh, they just did such a good job on all the stories. Even the, like, side quests. I'm impressed with, um, just how much care and they put into quests that you know, you, depending on how you play, or you don't even have to do side quests, and so people won't even reach um, things that are kind of just out in the middle of nowhere, and you're like, oh, the likelihood of, you know, I guess I, I enjoy go doing 100% of the game, but I know not everyone does. Some people just want to stick to the main quest, and there's it's just crazy that they take, they took the time to give those side quests so much character of their own. And even just NPCs, people you don't even interact with, apparently they're, um, they're each individually designed to be um, different based on their region, like what they say, their jobs, their paths. Um, I think even like down to the tattoos on like the sailors, each they ha they represent different things, different like sailors in different regions have different um, tattoo designs. I just, it's very impressive the dedication and they did into those games. Or into that game, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, and like I said, I'm really excited that they're redoing Witcher 1. I really do hope that they just redo it and make it a whole open world rather than just like remastering it like they did with Skyrim. Which, I mean, I, I was good that they did it with Skyrim, but. They, um, I don't know if they, like, add, maybe they added, like, some small things in there, but it would be nice if they just kind of redid it, made it a whole open world, um, different endings, but there's June, I'm going to July.
like how I'm not even really following my blue lines. Yeah, they're just a reference anyways. Oh, did not go into the proper hole. Oh, where'd, where'd you come from? That's why you wrap everything, so you don't get random strings. There we go. There we go. All right, another J. We'll move on to the U. Oh my gosh, there we go. <laughs> I am getting a little close to the top of my screen there. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> Drinking soda, and uh, who knew carbonation would make you burp? <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna go straight back up. And then back down. You. <laughs> All right, now this L should be pretty straightforward. <laughs> oh my gosh. There we go. <clears throat> so, being pretty short on the string, I think I'll only have enough to do August, but I will try and spread this out. July! Alright. Here, I'll show you the whole thing like that. So that would be the top. So currently on the bottom here. Whoop! Sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I'll have to lint roll this. I, I know the camera isn't picking it all up, but there's like little black fuzzies all over because this thread 
just loves to shear. All right, so now work on this A for August. So, um, hope, uh, like I was saying with the Witcher, I'm going to be doing that um, wheel that helps me decide my fate. If that works out, I'm going to try and do other games that way, uh, even what, like ones I've never played, just because I always do tend to play the, I don't tend to, I play the good person, like I answer is... I won't take the money, I'll just try and be as positive as possible with the game. And um, I know there are tons of games out there that are decision-based. It don't have to be open world, but it would be fun to stick with open worlds at least for a little while. But like I said, we've just started The Witcher, so still got a long ways to go. And I'll, I'll do all the DLCs and... Um, Oh my gosh, would that be amazing if they released the fourth one by the time I finished the DLCs for Witcher 3? Oh! They would just jump right into Witcher 4. <laughs> but, um... I don't think Fallout 4 had a lot of decisions. I mean, you can like choose which faction, I believe, um, you like went with, but I don't know if there were really like decisions that changed the story or the outcome. Um, I never played New Vegas, but I do feel like I've heard that that one had some like conversational decisions and how you answered things or how like what missions you did affected the story. Um, I don't know, but I do. I have heard good things of um, Fallout New Vegas, so possibly put that on the list. Um, Trying to think. I had I had a whole list. I just haven't looked at it in a while of possible decision based games. That would be fun to just like let a wheel decide so that I get whatever ending I get. <laughs> oh, even though I'm gonna moan about it. But I guess if it's a game I've never played, I won't know. Um, actually, I think I am going to do that straight up. This is the only G. So if I go up and then over. So if I go there. Um, but even, I, I feel like Fallout is more like Skyrim decision base where you just kind of pick a side and then you do the quests and, you know, the game adapts to whatever side you end up playing. Not necessarily giving you a, a new ending, it's just already a, um, it's just a whatever faction you decide on versus, you know, how you answer questions or how you react in certain situations. Let's do that. I think I'm just going to go right there and then down. What do you think? 
I hope that looks good. Yeah, I like it. And then we'll come in the center of that and then go down like that. Is that a G? <laughs> Is that how G's work? There we go. I think that's what a G looks like. I love it. That's a great G. Okay. And I do have a little bit. I guess I can do maybe a few back stitches here just to use the rest of this. So we'll go ahead and do that. But definitely not going to make it all the way down. There we go. Man, sometimes my needle just does not. Oh, look at that tail. Look how short. <laughs> there we go. Maybe two more. Yep, all right, I got two more. And I think I'm going to tie off there. Yeah. Just like that. And, oh, oh. Just like that. I'm gonna cut this off. Look how little. My favorite is when there's so little that it's, I don't even have to cut anything. You're like, oh, I used exactly the right amount of string, which I could have probably done one more. But, all right. Getting more black. We'll go with arm's length again. And we'll continue down here. And I'm going to come back up. Or I could go down up here and then November, and then the ending will be September. Oh no, wait. So I'll be back down, but I have to figure out how to get back up. Mm. Yep, I think we're going to have to go down, up, September, and then go over to back to October. A little backtracky. Not my favorite, but. Do what you gotta do. Two knots. Try and there we go. I can look on my phone of uh, decision-based games that I was looking at. One sec. I can pull that up. Okay, so yeah. Um, Fallout New Vegas was on my list. Um, the rest of them I really don't know anything about. Um... I've heard of some of them. So like Mass Effect, I've heard about and maybe seen a little bit of gameplay, but I could not tell you what the story is about at all. Um, but apparently one through three are decision-based 
um, games. So that would be fun to just kind of go in blind and just spin the wheel. And I, I would have to, I guess, do a little bit of planning ahead to just figure out where the decisions are coming up. And I don't know if any of them are timed because I do the, the Witcher um, has timed based decisions and those I would have to plan ahead and can't really like, I don't think you can pause. Oh. I need to redo that. Slightly off the line. Um, so yeah, Mass Effect is one. Divinity, Original Sin, one and two. That's on my list. I've never even heard of that. Um, but apparently a decision-based game. Uh, Moon Hunters was another one. Never heard of that. And I don't even know if I'd be able to. So, like, I don't have a PlayStation. So, if any of the games are PlayStation-based, I obviously wouldn't be able to play those. Um, and I'd be willing to play PC games. I just never have. I, I did in middle school and high school. Um, played the Sims and all the Harry Potter games. Oh, I loved those Harry Potter games so much. I've uh, watched a few YouTube videos of people going back and playing them and oh my gosh, they look horrible. But they were so much fun. Very nostalgic. <laughs> um, but um, if a game is only... So I, I do know that like PlayStation and Xbox to offer their game out to a wider audience, a lot like also release eventually PlayStation or um, their games on PC. So, um, what? there's a, another creator, Mythalus. He was playing Horizon, the Horizon games, and he was saying the first one is on PC. If there is a second one, it's only on PlayStation. So maybe once that gets released, I can do both back to back. I don't know if there's any decision making on those either. Um, but th those games look gorgeous. They're beautiful. And I believe they're open world. And I'm all about that open world. <laughs> I just want to go exploring. Almost. Um, let's see. Another one was Dragon Age Origins. I do know um, of those games. I've only seen gameplay of them, though. I don't. I've never played them. Uh, the Walking Dead, the comic book um, games. I watched. Uh, Another streamer is Nip. He played those and they looked so good. I was only able to like watch them um, a few times. So I do know like certain things that happen, but the overall, like each chapter and like the decisions and which ones affect who or what, um, I do not know the details of that, so it'd be fun to go in and do that with a wheel. Um, I do know that some of those are time-based ones, so I'd have to go in and do some pre-planning definitely with that, but um, that's an idea. Uh, Life is Strange. I've, I've watched some uh, gameplay of that as well. That looks really good. Um, 
not really. I don't think that one's like an open world. The only gameplay I've watched is like in a house. I don't know if you just stay in the house the whole time. It was very short. Um, someone was doing that on Twitch and just was watching a little bit of that. Um, Vampire sounds like a fun one for Halloween. Actually, I think Walking Dead, a lot of people were playing that during Halloween as well. Because of all the zombies! <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so Vampire could be one. I don't, I've never seen anything about that one. But if it's a decision-based game, and I could do it, that would be fun. Um, Kingdom Come Deliverance. That one I'd never heard of. Um, but was on a list of decision-based games. So thought I'd throw it on the list. Check it out. Uh, the other one, Catherine, was... I, I believe that's like a horror game as well. Which I, I love horror. I've, um... I haven't played very many horror-based... I'm trying to think. I don't think I've ever played a horror-based game, like one that's meant to scare you, but I've watched people like this last October. Everyone was playing um, scary scary games, because, you know, tis the season. Tis the spooky season. Um, but I've never done one, so I wonder if I'd be, like, as jumpy. I don't know. I... I don't really jump a lot in games, or in movies, I'm sorry, I misspoke there. Um, sometimes, sometimes jump scares get me, but I, I, as I've gotten older and the more I watch them, the more I can see them coming, and I just, like, get my body ready, and I'm like, oh, yep, that, yep, that just happened, that, that was a jump scare. <laughs> um, but, heard good things, so it'd be fun to check that out. Um, another decision-based game I could do was uh, State of Decay. I've heard of it, but I've never seen anything about it. Don't I couldn't even tell you. I, I've heard the name, but I couldn't tell you a single thing about it. Um, Pillars of Eternity. Um, that's another one. Never heard of it. I've never even heard the name. It was just on the list. Dishonored 2. So, for some reason, uh, Dishonored 1 wasn't on there, so I don't know if they only made the second Dishonored have decisions. And, like, I, I don't know. I've heard that name, but I don't know anything about the game. So I don't know, like, maybe the first one was just straightforward and you could only follow the one path, so there wasn't, you know any decisions that you really had to do and then for the second one maybe they made it more like a you choose your own adventure choose your course kind of a thing i don't know have to see if we ever if i ever want to play that one and pray i uh, don't know anything about that or as dusk falls that's another one i i I did not know anything about, but apparently all these uh, games I'm mentioning are just decision-based games, like um, what I could possibly do that what I'm planning on doing with Witcher, where just let a wheel of fate decide my decisions so that I um, so that I don't make the decisions and the ending or whatever ending you get is all just based on uh, you're letting fate decide, pretty much. Uh, another one, um, which I, I've only seen the movie, so I don't even know where the decision base is coming from, but that uh, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy is apparently considered a decision-based game. So, um, just another I could look into. And Fable... Outer Worlds and Weird West are the last three. So I I don't even know if they're 
either only on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. So I didn't even look into that. I just went online and was trying to think, can I actually do this with other games? Just to have fun with it and force myself to play a little recklessly and not have to not be the good guy and you know possibly get a bad ending it's okay it's just a game <laughs> but um but yep yeah, those are all just options that I've I have just for future future days all right, we're almost to September. Oh, and I almost did what I did the before. All right. So that's where we're at. Now I will work on September and then I'll backtrack to October. We have quite a bit of string left, so we'll definitely be able to get these two, maybe even here. And then once we finish November, we'll be all done. Right at the three hour mark, so. Probably just another hour. We shall see how quickly I can do these. I'm much faster at the straight line than I am with the, the lettering. I wonder why. Let's go right there. Oh, sorry. So the icons for the bullet journal are supposed to represent like the day, just a little memory of the day of when you're doing the, the piece. I'm not really sure what I'll be doing this Tuesday. Like those kind of made sense because it's the beginning of the month. I had plans to do those different projects, start new things. And I guess if I'm unsure, I could just do like a cup of coffee. <laughs> I don't know what would make that special just because it's, I have it every day. But I have to really start brainstorming some uh, icon ideas. So um, we had a pretty good snowstorm this last weekend, but it's already melted away. I was thinking of doing like something weather related, but I don't I wanna wait until we have like a crazy winter storm before I do that. Like a snowflake or I 
I guess if we have like a really nice day, I could do like a sun. But I'm sure a sun would be more appropriate down here. And like maybe the hottest day, I could do um, a little temperature gauge or something. And then maybe the coldest day, like just change up the color. Oof, that E's a bit big. What am I, why am I making the E's so big? I guess as, I guess as long as they're all big, I'll just be. All right, how to do this S. If I go there. Just play around. Let's just try. Mm -hmm. um, other ideas are <laughs> I've heard on like if you like animals, so if like, I don't know, if we have lots of like squirrels and bunnies, so it wouldn't be like that special, but like if you see a, an animal that you've never like really seen before, um, like in your neighborhood, I think that would be cute. A while ago, I think it was like last year, there apparently was a bear sighting. It was crazy, because we're like in the city. Bears got to eat too. And they really love our trash. I do know like at um, national parks they have to uh, lock up like their dumpsters and stuff because that's apparently a big problem. What's that? Yeah, kind of looks like an S, right? We're getting there. It's an S. <laughs> or a five. <laughs> um... Or it kind of looks like that uh, symbol that everyone would draw in like middle school, that like fancy S thing. <laughs> it kind of looks like that. Hey, but that's September. Look at that. We're rocking. Not even going to need another hour. All right. I'm going to move on to the O of October. Actually, let's start over here. Wait, did I already have an O? Oh, I did that one as a triangle. I think since this is quite a bit larger, I'm going to do straight and then like a triangle, straight, triangle. There are lots of fun, cute food icons that we could do. Like ice cream, anything really. You can do all kinds of fruits and, or vegetables. I don't know what I would, why I would choose a specific fruit or veg, or you know, a specific food. I guess if I'm like really craving something, I don't really eat. So I guess if um, my girlfriend bakes a lot, so maybe like whenever she comes over and we bake something, that would be fun. Um, man, when I was looking online, a lot of the icons were like office related and work related. And I was like, I don't want to just have like, Oh, hey, Cage. I'm so sorry. I I did the same thing to Scotty earlier where I didn't even, I'm just like in the zone and just looking down at my project, not even just rambling to myself. <laughs> I was just trying to think of other uh, 
icons I could do in the future. But um, yeah, I'm okay. I'm just uh, trying. Almost done. Yeah, we're getting there. We're only one more line in November, so shouldn't be. Yeah, just a few more minutes, I think. But um, thank you. Thank you very much. I uh, here I'll take a second here. Show you from the top. Oops. There we go. Right there. So today, so here, I'll try and get closer here. We did this guy uh, last Thursday before I started The Witcher. And since I died twice, I added these two little dots today to represent my deaths. And as we go along, I'm just going to like add little dots for each death. And then this little guy's a little house. I'm going to be doing um, some digital art of houses in winter scenes, like with snow and everything like that. And so that's my first one will be posted tomorrow. So that's what that's supposed to represent. It's a little chimney and it's got a little light on in the house. Um, it's it's kind of hard to see the color because I did do this blue everywhere. It, it'll once it gets wet, that blue disappears. It it it's great. It's a nice little ink that just disappears once it gets wet. So, but since it's pretty much the exact same color as the house I chose, it kind of like hides the string color. It kind of it's hard to hard to really see it. But um, yeah, and then today we did the year and all of these months really jammed it out. A lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. It's a lot bigger than I probably should have done, but with how much detail is in it, I, I didn't know how to do it any smaller because this is about the size, these two are the size that I I'm more going for, but there's no way I could have done, you know, that detail work. I, I was already struggling with like the mouth and the teeth. I was like, how am I gonna, how am I gonna do the like mouth? But yeah, I think he came out really cool. He's just bigger than I intended. <laughs> So I have to, the rest of the month is going to be uh, a bit uh, interesting because it's, uh, I have already used quite a lot of space and we're only on the 8th. So <laughs> we'll see. But how are you doing? How's your Sunday? I hope you're doing well. Let's work on the C. So here's the backing. Fun chaos going on on the back. <gasps> Squid Squad! Hey! Welcome in! Oh, you just woke up! Oh, nice. Well, I I hope you're feeling okay and you didn't sleep in because you weren't feeling well and you just needed sleep. But, um... I, it is nice to sleep in, especially on the weekend. You're just like, yes, I just, my body needs a second. But... Yeah! Oh, and um, you had mentioned before, actually, today's question of the day is uh, for you. Oh, wait. I have to actually, like, type in there. Hang on. Question of the day. Hey! Because you were talking about how you were doing some drawings and stuff. Please tell me about it. I, I, um... I know we had ended, we were ending right as you had mentioned that, and I, I got really excited because I love hearing about people's crafts. But same, yeah, same to you, Cage. Are you, uh... oh, your sleep schedule's all messed up. Oh, no. Oh, is that by choice or is that a work thing? Because I know how work can just, they need you at certain hours. They're like, nope, you have to come into the night shift even though you've been working day shifts all week or something like that. Oh, there's like no consideration for your actual sleep needs, you know, outside of work life. But um, yeah, Cage, are you working on any projects? Do you draw any art stuff you do? Or not even art, just like crafting projects, woodworking. Do you work on your car, like a car? My dad loves working on his. He does a 
he remodels old Volkswagens. So he does like buses and car Kias. He has like the old truck and a bug. Oh, oh, one second. My dog is, wants to be in here. One sec. Hi. Yes. Come on. Under. Come on. Go. Sorry about that. My puppy is quite needy. Yeah. Oh, he's got in your way. Lay down. <laughs> he doesn't know what he wants. Your poor baby. Oh, <gasps> you're doing some digital art. Oh. Okay. Um. What's your Instagram? I gotta follow you. Or am I already following you? I actually don't know. Um, I haven't been on Instagram in a, in a hot minute. I'm gonna be posting a new project. Hey, yeah, yeah, dog. <laughs> he is not happy. Um, ooh, do you post um, just your digital art? Or are you on Instagram or do you post or share it anywhere? I'd love to see your cosplay stuff too. How long does it take you to do armor like that? Like if you did a full body, is that like a whole month? There you go, buddy. Oh my goodness. All right, there's that C. All right, let me move this light again. Oh geez. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay, so I don't, I, uh, I'm not a Twitter person. I don't have Twitter, but yes, I will definitely uh, get on Instagram and check you out. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't do the Twitter or the TikTok. Definitely not TikTok. Mm -mm. But that's exciting. I love craft projects. Do you have any cons uh, coming up? Is that why you're working on your armor? Oh, so, yeah. Oh, you don't do social stuff either. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I only still have Facebook for my family, and I don't even really post on there. I post on there through Instagram, so I'll, like connect the two accounts and then people post on the Facebook thing and I'm like oh god I have to like go into Facebook to like talk to people oh oh my gosh it's a little tight on this top so I'm having to work behind this back hoop to get all the way to this edge I have to do it at an angle, and it's just a little tight back there. Oh, and there we go. Ooh, that's fun. Oh my gosh. Oh. I just went through the wrong, same hole. Whoops. That's cool. Oh my gosh, I bet it's going to be huge. Star Wars' fan base is crazy big. So I'm sure it's just going to be so many uh, people. Oh my gosh, I love... Uh, um, is it, uh, everyone does a bunch of different Stormtrooper. I believe it's a... There's a big group of people that they all do like different... Oh no no, Mandalorians. Like uh um don't didn't you mention that you uh, have a Mandalorian costume? Um I know there's a bunch of people that dress up with that and it's like they all get together and they have a whole uh big old group picture photo together. Oh, that's so cool. 
I love that cons you can just go in and just be like, your outfit is awesome. Can we get a picture? <laughs> is everyone celebrating that they all like the same thing? That is wonderful. Oh, okay. Sorry. I don't know Star Wars anything. So I am. Um, well, wait. They have lightsabers. I know that about Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, I know. I've watched the original and then the. I guess the original six. I've, like, watched all of those. And then I watched. I saw. Which one did I see? I think it was the one about where they go and get the plans. It was supposed to be a newer one of where they they found the Death Star plans or something like that. And I think that's it. Oh, I did watch The Mandalorian with... Oh, Rogue One. That's it. Yes. Yeah. I did watch The Mandalorian and because uh, Baby Yoda was such a huge thing. And I had to see what the heck that was about, and uh, it was great. I loved him. Anytime he used his little force powers and then passed out. Oh, so cute. So cute. Oh, but I don't know anything about the lore or anything. Really? Oh, good. I'm glad I saw your... Okay, well, I'm glad that that was the best at it. Because, yeah, I haven't seen any of the the new ones with, like... I, I don't know any of the... Um, I thought they, like, brought back a lot of the original cast. I just haven't seen any of them. At least I don't believe I have. If I have, I don't remember it. Oh my gosh. I don't want to have to redo this just for a knot. But I gotta. Oh, there we go. Oh, really? Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, especially with the fan base being so big, like, you really should be, it should be, like, catering to the fans and making sure that they're top tier. And Disney has the money, or at least I would have thought they'd have the money to make them, like, get the best, best of the best to make sure that they're as good as they possibly can be. Look at that. All right, so now we're just gonna do this line in November and we'll be all good. Um, the next, uh, this Tuesday, um, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do, but we'll do like a little icon right here. Uh, the little icons are just supposed to represent what your day is or just like a little memory. So, um, this one was the first uh, first Twitch stream. That was when we first started uh, Witcher on Thursday. These two little dots represent uh, the two deaths <laughs> that uh, we got. One of them being that great fall. <laughs> oh, the series have been good. Ooh, I, maybe I should go in. Uh, the only one I, I know of was The Mandalorian. Did they ever do a second season of that? I have uh, not really been paying attention to anything Disney's been putting out. I do want to watch that Strange World. I really like animated. Oh, I missed it. <gasps> oh, dang. So yeah, they have season two already. Okay. Maybe I'll wait until season three, because I love binge watching stuff. I feel like I remember more about 
the story and like I just remember it much better. So like all of the um American horror stories, uh I always wait until the season is completely done and then I just binge watch the whole thing in one sitting. Yes, it's like twelve hours of just watching a horror show. It's great. <laughs> um Oh, uh, and actually, I am going to start down here so that I can go up and then over to November versus going back down and then wasting a bunch of string to make that connection. So we're going to do that. But um, so this little house, uh, I'll be doing some winter scenes of little houses and um, posting them on the on my Instagram but my plan is to do the same houses for each season so I'll do like four houses in winter scene and then in the spring I'll redo them in a, like all in flowers and like blooming and all that stuff and then summer um, everything will be full bloom, all sunny, green, bright green grass, that kind of a thing. And then fall, of course, all the leaves and all that stuff. So each house will be the start of when I start drawing those of whatever month I decide to put them in. Um, so that'll be good. Man, Manda, oh, Boba Fett, that's right. Okay, I did hear about Boba Fett. I forgot about that one. Oh my gosh, they are like going crazy I had not heard of okay I think I heard of An Andor but the th three that are coming soon I had no idea oh my gosh yeah you'll have your fill that yeah more than a fill that's a feast of content Hopefully they spread them out so that, uh, and if, um, the Mandalorian is also getting another season, then you'll have that on top of all the new stuff. Oh my gosh. I hope they spread them out. So it's not like overlapping. I'd get so confused, especially like not knowing any of the lore or the characters. I would just be like, wait, who is this? How, how is this related? That is awesome that they're able to make all that content. I hope it's really good. I hope it's better than the uh, new trilogy. I'm trying to think, I may have actually seen the first one of the trilogy. I'm pretty sure. Now that I'm thinking about it. Sorry, I, uh, you're a huge fan. Yes. That is so awesome. So did you, um, make your cause, your, like, armor set before the season came out? Or was that kind of your inspiration? You were like, oh, this season is, uh, this, ep um, excuse me. The show is so good, I've got to get this armor. Because <laughs> I know he was in the, um, he was in the original trilogy, right? He was the, he's the bounty. Oh no, I'm thinking Bobo Fett. What was the Mandalorian from? Because the Bobo... Bobo Fett was the bounty hunter from the original trilogy. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't know anything about the lore. <laughs> I'm a Star Trek girl. <laughs> but really only next generation. I haven't watched anything outside of that. 
I did watch the new movies and they were they were fun. I just um Kirk as a character is kind of annoying sometimes to me. But that's his character. <gasps> You're all <gasps> You're allowed to like Star Wars and Star Trek? I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> What, um, do you have a favorite series or do you, do you like them all? Do you do any cosplay with, uh, Star Trek? I have an Ahura outfit. I've done that once at a con. I want to, um, I wanted to do a, uh, engineer because that's actually, I, that's, actually my profession. I went to school to be an engineer. Um, so I wanted the yellow from next gen, but uh, I would rather make that costume versus just buying it because the Ahura one I just bought because it was a last minute like, we should go to this con. I don't have anything. I want to cosplay, but I this was last minute. A horror it is. <laughs> oh, you haven't. What What would you do if if uh, if you could, or when you do? All right. Almost done. Wow, this went way faster than I thought it would. Oh, I, I need to turn that timer down. That timer is... Quite intense. One second. Oh, because <laughs> it's every 15 minutes. Whoops. Let's do 30. Oh, and that's not a question of the day. That was my fun fact. Silly, silly me. So that timer that's going off was supposed to be the question of the day, which was the, like, what are you working on? Save. There we go. There we go. Let's make it every 30 minutes. Okay. Hopefully that'll be better. But that earliest embroidery... Ooh, Deep Space Nine, really? Okay, so, yeah, I really do need to go and like go back and watch the like anything after i've watched a, a handful of episodes of the original it's it's hard for me just oh like i said kirk just kind of drives me crazy but um yeah the new stuff and especially with like the special effects and oh, they can do so much i mean they did a good job with next gen for like the time but nowadays, man, you can do so much. Was, um, I'm trying to think, was Deep Space Nine two, two seasons after? I don't think it's the one right after Next Gen. I want to say it's the one after, the one that's after Next Gen. But I do not actually know the order. I'm not a true Trekkie because I don't know everything about all the lore and everything. I should just say, I just like Picard and Data 
and Riker's fine. He has his moments as well. I'm like, come on, Riker. <laughs> um, oh, and Jordy. Yes, love him. And Worf is fun, even though I wish he'd win more fights once in a while. <laughs> oh, it was right after Next Gen. Okay, okay. I thought it was the one after that. I'm okay with that. This O is a lot smaller than this O. I don't think I like that. I'm gonna move it over a little. Oh, I think I had Voyager and Deep Space Nine switched in my head. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and now they're on Discovery. Oh my gosh, I gotta re... I gotta use my little... Beretta. Oh, you were brought up with Voyager. Oh, see, my mom um, loved Next Gen. And so when I was a kid, all I did was grow up with that. Reruns of Next Gen. And um, never really watched anything else and didn't have any way to do it in, in call like watch anything in college. So. That's all I really knew. And then the movies. I watched all the movies. Oh, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's your dad show, yeah. <laughs> it's funny, my mom liked uh, the nerdy shows, so like uh, Star Trek and uh, um, Stargate and stuff like that. And then my dad liked the reality shows, so Survivor, um, Big Brother, uh Amazing Race, all um, all those. And I just, oh my god, it's like family TV time, and I'm like, oh, can we just, can we go back to uh, Sci-Fi Channel, please, please? <laughs> yeah, I, um, I, I definitely think I'm the only nerd. My mom, that's as nerdy as my mom would get, was watching that show, and she doesn't even watch it anymore. She's, oh, people hate Discovery. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's too bad. But I'm glad you like it. That's that's important. Who cares what other people think? If you enjoy it, that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely need to go and actually watch all the other, all the other seasons. The whole time, though, I know I'm just gonna be like, Picard's not in it, so it's not as good. <laughs> I have a bias. <laughs> My goddaughter, I'm dragging into the nerdy side. Yes, yes, encourage it. Yes, that's it. Um, my um, boyfriend's nephews, I keep giving them like nerdy gifts and just trying to be like, come on, be nerdy. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Uh, this O is quite small. Oh, I don't like that. I'm redoing it. I keep redoing this last little bit. I know it's unnecessary. It's just me. Being particular. Oh, how'd you like Willow? That's another one I've, I've hearing mixed reviews about. I never watched the movie, the original movie. Um... crazy all the stuff that Disney is pumping out let's see if I can do this nope 
Oh, oh, um, the original movie or the uh, the TV show. Because I know, like, I feel like the movie was from, like, the 80s. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I hear great things about the movie. Lord of the Rings was why I got into fantasy. That was my dad's favorite book. I guess I guess my parents are a little nerdy. They, they don't like to admit it, but and they don't really like to embrace it. But some of my favorite things are from them. I guess the nerdy things from them are, but uh, yeah, I definitely heard great things about that movie. I didn't even know that that was um, by the same creator of Star Wars. Like I did not know, and I think he also did Indiana Jones, which I never watched any of those movies either um he was just pumping out hits one right after another there we go that's better that's better yeah okay i thought it was an 80s film yeah there we go <laughs> that O totally took over the the V. So let's I think Yeah, we'll do just have to eyeball it. I feel like that's too low. Let me make sure. I keep accidentally pulling up. George Lucas, that's it, yeah. Yeah, he was just pumping stuff out in the 80s and 90s. Actually, was Indiana Jones also the 80s? I don't know. That, that franchise, I don't know really anything about. Except that he, it was like, so I loved um, Laura Croft, and that's kind of what I, I think they're kind of the same vein of action shows. It's the same concept of like raiding a tomb. Ron Howard announced, oh, oh, that's so cool. That uh, his daughter kind of picked up the mantle. That is so cool. Like a family business. Oh, he was in the 80s. Yeah. They came out with so many movies, though. So I figured they at least had one in the 90s. I know there's a new one. The one that we must not speak of. The fourth one. With... Uh... Oh, Shia LaBeouf. Yes. Kid from Holes. Loved Holes. Loved that book. Loved that movie. That's a Disney thing, right? I feel like that was on Disney constantly. At least I think it was. Oh, okay. I had no idea. Yeah, I'm terrible with, like, famous people names and stuff. That's cool. I love the Jurassic Park franchises. I, I even would, like, rewatch the second and third one. The second one wasn't... This was fine, I guess, but the, um... Looks like it's brown underneath there. Um, I just like the monsters. It's a great thriller, like suspense. 
movie. Now they're just fun wild rides, which are still fun, but I feel like the thrill suspense isn't there anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah, a little bit, a little, a uh, little bit, but that's I. That's wonderful. That's I. Um, I just like things. I just feel I don't know really anything about them. <laughs> I have like a few actors and actresses that I know their names and I know their face. So like Gerard Butler, I know him. He's the guy from like 300. Um, I loved Whoopi Goldberg from uh, uh, Sister Act. Like there are certain things that I just remember from my childhood that I'm like, yep, I know that actor and actress. Um, and um, Patrick Stewart, know him from Next Gen. I think he's the only actor I could, I remember out of that entire, like the actual name of the actor from Star Trek. All right, there it is. So here, I'll show you the magic of this pen before we get off. <gasps> you have a photographic memory? That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, you want to be on my, like, pub quiz team? We need, I, we have all the people that know, like, the random facts. Uh, no one knows pop culture. <laughs> but it's also very just, like, random stuff, too. So it's, like, hit or miss pop culture, I feel like. There are certain things that you're like, oh, yeah, I know that. Um, oh, I love, I love, uh, trivia nights. Those are so fun. It's been a long, it's been a few months since I've done a, a trivia night. Um, so guys, we finished. Oh, oh, you're the, the sports person too. That's another, I, I only know. No, I could, I would not be helpful with sports either. Mm -mm. Definitely not. Another, like, names thing, like uh, sports athletes and stuff like that. Um, don't know. Don't know that. So, oh, sorry. That Streamlabs thing is just a timer. That's what I would just, uh, just fixed. We're already talking about it, but, um, all right. So here's the, uh, thank you. Yeah. I'm excited to see what happens by the end of the year. Um, so these are the colors we did. So I have to remember that the little red dots for each death I get is going to be this 320. Oh my gosh. Focus camera. There you go. Um, the black is always 310. That's just the number for that. The little house was the base color was this like blue gray 807. The outline of the door and window and the roof was 931, this gray blue. And then the chimney was this rose muted rose dusty rose uh 3722 so um oh no please do. oh yeah there's all kind of sports going on today it's a big week for a bunch of teams um i'm actually interested to see I was, we were watching a, a game right before I went on. I'm interested to see how it turned out. But, um, all right, let me step away for just a second, and I can show you guys how the blue will just disappear. So kind of give you a look at here. Actually, if I kind of bring it into the light, I did a pretty good job of covering it, but you can see it on the November quite a bit, September and May. So I'll be right back. I'm going to get it all wet and it will be a bit darker. Um, oh, they pinched the playoffs. Awesome. Oh, congratulations on your team getting there. Oh, excuse me, pup. 
All right, I'll be right back. Hit the microphone. Sorry about that. All right. I had to put it on a towel because obviously it's wet. But if you really drench it, all of that blue just went away. It's disappeared. And it'll dry out just normal. Now you can actually see the color of the house. A little chimney right next to it. I am. Um, so yeah. So um, before each stream, I'm thinking on Tuesday I'll add something, hopefully small, right down below. And then instead of adding a new little icon on Thursday just because this did take up so much room. At the end of Thursday's stream, I'm going to take whatever deaths I have happen from Tuesday and Thursday and just add them with these little dots uh, just to represent the deaths that happen over time. Um, just because it is already really tight. We're only on the 8th and I have very little space already. So, um, yeah. We'll see. I probably should have planned out a little better, but it's my first time doing these this this guy, so we'll see. Um, it's a lot of fuzz. This black thread just man, it frays so bad. <laughs> but all right, so that is the embroidery journal. Um, like I said, next Tuesday we'll get back into Witcher. And then, um, oh, I'm sorry. Here's the little house. There's our little house. Right below the little Twitch guy. I might go back and fill in the colors. But, uh, oh, hey, Ryan. <laughs> Welcome in. We're actually just about to raid out. But thank you for stopping by. <laughs> yep, just finished it. Just got it all wet, so all of the uh, disappearing ink would go away. But by the end of the year, it'll be all filled up with tons of fun little icons. But, yeah. Um, so next Sunday, I'm going to be doing a crocheting. Um, I make these little winter hats. They're about, I don't know, two, three inches long. And um, they're just a fun little gift I, I've done in the past for friends and families. Oh, your color, oh no. <gasps> You're gonna knit a blanket, yes. I, I can't knit. I can't do the whole like, two things, but I can hook because that just requires one hand. I can do that. Woof. <laughs> are you knitting a blanket for yourself? Or are you doing like a little gift or? Um, here. Let me try and 
do that maybe? Oh, well, I mean, blankets are time consuming. I, I started a baby blanket for one of my girlfriends and it's only half done. I, I chose the wrong pattern. Um, cause it really depends. Like if you, some patterns just are so time consuming. So there we go. That's better. It actually fits in the frame now. Oh, it's okay. He can appreciate it when he gets old. Yeah. He still will love it. I'm sure. Yeah, it depends on the size of the blanket too. Yes, if it's a uh, if it's a big, big blanket, it can uh, it can take a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, send it to us if you uh, if he doesn't want it. <laughs> do you do um do you do lots of crafts, Ryan, or is it were you just like working on that for your son, just for a, a one one time thing? Okay, and well, thank you guys for coming in. Um, since we did finish this, you're all good. We'll be able to see it at the beginning of uh, every stream. We'll just add on to it, and um, we'll go ahead and look for someone to raid out to. Oh, the one, yeah, exactly. Just keep adding to it. I've seen some where um, people just add on to their, they do like a temperature blanket and it's literally just like one row a day. So if you just do one row a day, you'll get there. You'll get there. Or like one row every other day. You don't even really have to. Because yeah, depending on how wide it is, like how long your run is, um, depends on like how long it takes in that sitting to go through and finish that single run or row, sorry, row. That's the right term. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, so my last two, okay, so my first dream I did Lady Puss, and my last one I did Hardcore Herring. They're both on. I don't want to do them again, even though they're both awesome. I should do someone new. Hmm. Okay, do you guys want to do someone who's playing DayZ or Resident Evil Village? I have two friends. I have only been in there. I've only hung out with them a few times. But they're new, so I could do either one of either of them. I do know Resident Evil. I don't know what DayZ is. Sounds, they both sound, I, I'm pretty sure they're both like zombie games. Resident Evil is that like, well, Resident Evil isn't zombies, right? They're genetic mutations. Oh, you're gonna head to bed anyways. Okay, well, let's just go to Dilly Doe. He, he is the he is, um, least amount of viewers. I like to go to the smaller, smaller guys. So we'll go raid out. Thank you guys for stopping by. I greatly appreciate you coming by. Um, just chatting, saying hey, or just lurking. Doesn't matter. I love it. Um, still new, still trying to figure all this out. So I do understand I am a bit like 
not as entertaining as I could be, but I, I'm trying. I'm still learning. But let's go raid Dilly Doe. Actually, it's Dilly the Doe. Boom. Oh, it's midnight for you. Oh, my goodness. Wait, did that work? I don't think that worked. It did not work. Is my how do you raid? I'm sorry, guys. How to raid? Apparently, I'm having oh, it's the ad. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was like, what did I do wrong? Raid at there we go. Thank you, thank you. <gasps> what? Dilly the Doe. That is definitely his name. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> um. Right. Oh my goodness! Say I'm so new to this. I'm so just. This is what happened the first time I tried to raid Scotty, and I was like, what am I doing wrong? Huh. Why is it saying it's not? Okay, well, maybe we're not going to do him, since it doesn't like his username. I guess we'll go to Annie. Or Ann, I guess. Sorry, guys! ay ay ay. Oh, hers is Annihilator. Oh, gosh. Early spelling. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, yeah. Okay, well, it keeps telling me I have invalid username, so maybe it is. I'm going to blame it on Twitch. <laughs> Underscore and underscore. Oh, there we go. Huh. I... I don't know what happened. I don't know why it wanted it. Yeah. Okay. Well, great. I'm glad one of them worked. <laughs> uh, sixth. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Six times the charm. Yes rocking but thank you guys uh for joining me hanging out stopping by we're gonna go watch some resident evil village and hopefully not get too scared or just call it a night and relax go go get some sleep thank you for stopping by again i really appreciate you guys um hopefully i'll see you tuesday uh actually i'll probably see you guys as an is this stream um tomorrow <laughs> of course, can't miss this. But um, yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday. And thanks again. I really appreciate you guys. Bye.